Okay guys, welcome back to the Easy Clone demo series. In this demo, I'm going to be showing you how to use random delay and the delay checkboxes within the Easy Clones effect themselves. So first of all, I'm going to be building a new clone system out of these circles. So I'm just going to select all of our circles and hit create clones. I'll call these circles and I'm going to give it two colors. And in this example, I don't want to center to our controller because I want them to remain in their place that they're currently in on the composition. So I'm just going to click OK. So what you'll notice is different this time is our control layer is in the center here and all of our clones have remained where they are. And obviously you can still move this control layer and you'll see it repositions all of our clones. And again, for like scale and stuff. So if I scale this up, you can see the clones themselves grow. So that's basically how it works. Um, so anyways, I'm going to be showing you how to build animations using the Easy Clones effect itself. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to animate these clones individually growing on by coming to the scale property. And I'm just going to push that forward to 10 frames. Let's just zoom in here so we can see what we're doing. And over 10 frames, I want these to grow on. And I'm just going to ease the end value. So now you can see we've got this radial grow on. Um, actually, I want this to be our first clone. So I'm just going to reposition this up the top, select them all, and again, renumber our clones. So now it'll grow on from the top and go right around the circle, like so. So what I'm going to be animating is the, the X, Y, and Z positions. And I'm going to be animating the, the limiters, which are where we define our randomness. And again, just to re-emphasize, they are called decrease and increase on the other three properties. So what I want to do is animate these into position. So over this course of 10, 10 frames, one second, I'm going to have these form their position. So what I'm going to do is just add minus a thousand and a thousand to all of our properties here. Whoops. Like so. And obviously we currently don't have 3D layers. So to get 3D layers to work, we need to select our clones and just enable 3D. And for you to see how this works, if you go to two views and on the top view here, you will see where our clones are. Yellow is not a very good color. Let's just quickly change these to red so you can visually see them a bit better. And as we scrub through, you can see that the clones themselves have some depth in the Z value, like so. Okay, so let's just go back to one view. And I'm going to be explaining these modifier in the modifier, the, the delay checkboxes. So what you can see here is we have this lovely animation of these clone layers slowly forming their position whilst growing in scale, <coughs> like so. But what you will notice is on our last set of keyframes here, all of our clone layers come to their resting position. Now, because we have this grow of the scale on the scale, which I'm actually just gonna knock forward a few frames, it would be nice to see all the individual clones growing and then moving into position. So what we can do is we can just turn this on. And as you'll instantly notice, we get 
some of our clone layers fly off from their position because that means all this information here is now affected by the delay. So if we scrub through, you'll see it takes a while for our clones to meet their final resting place. So it's a way to give you a little bit more power over the more power, more control over your your animations, which is powerful. Um, in some instances, you will want them all to form at exactly the same time, and in others you won't. So this gives you that option. So as we can see here, this clone here is kind of the last one to settle, but it's coming from the kind of bottom right corner. I'd prefer this to come in from maybe the top left. So this is an example of where we can use our seeds. So if I just lock this quickly. So this is the clone layer we want to be focusing on here. We're just going to go through the seeds until he is coming from the right, the left, sorry, which he is now. Wait, sorry, no, it's the wrong one. It's this one here, but he is coming in from the right, so that's what we want. So let's do another. So now you can see it's growing from here and it's the last to settle. And that feels nicer to me. And obviously we've got this randomness and it makes our animation feel quite unique. Whilst being really simple, we've only put in, I don't know how many that is, but 12 keyframes. And then obviously we could come in here and we could easy ease these. We could stretch this out a little bit just to make this animation feel nicer. Like so. So with pretty little work, we've managed to build a pretty unique and complex looking animation. So now I'm going to quickly show you how you can animate colors. So in the first example, you don't need two colors, but I'll be showing you another example, which is why I put two on here. So let's say we want once our clones settle in position, so around this kind of two seconds mark. Let's say we want them to change color and randomize in their scale. So I'm just going to come forward 20 frames and I'm just going to change the color to a blue. And I'm actually going to do the same on the second one for now to just show you how this works. And then I'll show you why I put two colors on in a second. And we're going to just come into here. And we're going to animate the increase scale property. And again, I want this to be ticked because I do want it to be involved in the delay system. And I'm just going to vary the scale by 100%. So now you will see if I turn both of these off, we'll have this really boring animation. Well, not boring, but basic animation where we have almost like a linear transition. Let's just do a preview. Our circles begin to grow and change color at the same time. Um, but if we select these checkboxes and tell them to be affected by the delay, you'll see we get this really interesting. I'm going to need to preview a bit more we get this interesting like radial wipe which causes like a nice gradient of colors as it transforms so we get this nice rotation around our circles which feels a lot more exciting so that's how we can animate the actual easy clones effect to make some interesting looking animations like so so we've got these square squares circles forming in and then they grow in scale and the reason I added two colors here is we could make some of them go red for example so then now some of them fade blue some of them fade red and it's quite an interesting look and obviously again we can just cycle through the colors so if we prefer it to be balanced in a certain way like this 
you'll see all these animations still work fine and we've just redistributed where we want our colors to be within our circle as in our circle here like so <clears throat> so now i'm going to show you how you can add randomness to the actual delay itself so i'm going to go into the delay here and you see we have a drop down for random delay I'm first just going to hit zero on individual delay and what this will do is basically turn up all of these keyframes into linear so if I preview now you'll see everything forms at the same time and everything adapts as if this keyframe controls everything so there is no delay from A to B they all stop and rest and then from A to B they will grow and change color. So this is still useful to have. And then but what we can do is again, we've got the increase and the decrease and increase controls. So we can define a range uh, of randomness for the actual delay. So what we'll do is if we come here, I can demonstrate this a bit better. So if we add minus Let's go for five. We will essentially have built a range of delay between minus five and zero frames. And minus numbers are after the keyframe. So if I come forward, so obviously you can see there's no animation here. And if I start to come forward five frames, you'll see we're starting to get them animating, but you can see this is one of the first ones to begin animating and that we can find out why if we go hit E and we open our clone control effect here you'll see we have this option for random delay so you can see this has been given the number minus 0.55 which means it's a half a frame so after here within basically half a frame, this one will begin to animate. So you can see that's probably one of the first ones to start animating. And obviously all of these clones here will be given their own unique number there. So this one again is a similar rate, but if we adjust the seed, you'll see this one has changed to minus four. This one's in a similar sort of random pattern, obviously. But now you'll see how this has affected our animation. Now you can see sort of this one and this one are beginning to transform first. So here you can add randomness to the actual delay, which can make things feel a little bit more organic. And if I quickly show you, if I set this to zero again, and if I add plus five, what you'll notice is even though I'm lined up with the keyframes, some of them have already started to change and that's because they'll have a positive number here. So this one's got positive seven, which basically means seven frames before the action, it will begin to animate. So if I go forward back 10 frames, one, two, three, this would be seven before here. And if we pay attention to that one, you should see it begins to transform. So you could build a range of build ranges like so. So we could build a 10 frame range around here and they will obviously adapt like so. I was looking at the wrong number. I said seven, that's the random seed for the whole layer. It's actually four, but never mind. You get the idea. Increase adds time, like, goes backwards and decrease goes forwards in time. So now if we preview our animation, you'll see it's got this organic feel. It feels really complex. And again, we've done very little keyframe work. What is that? 14 keyframes, very easy to manage multiple shapes. And of course, you can still individually control these like so. So I can move this one down here and this one will just be randomly off, off center.
One final thing I just want to show you guys quickly is the center clones button. So say we've finished this animation here and we decide we want to then bring all of our clones into the center. What you can do is you can just select the key, plot a keyframe, come forward 10 frames and hit, well, well, well got him. Hit the center clones and this will push them all in so then these will drive into the center and if you didn't have any keyframes plotted so if I just undo that and what I'll do is just plot some keyframes on some of these and then hit the center it will plot keyframes for the ones that are already keyframed on the position and the other ones will just be pushed into the center. So just be wary of how that works. It's just a nice way of helping you get your clones into their center controller, which can be useful. That's it for the delay and effect animations. Be sure to watch the other videos for more features of easy clones.